This is the 82nd Airborne Division, fearless among fighting units. From Fort Bragg, home of the Airborne and the center of the military universe, this is the All-American Legacy Podcast. Go! An inside look at the 100-year history of the 82nd. They are all American all the way. something like this. Welcome back to the All-American Legacy Podcast. This is your host, Joe Bacino. If you are listening to this the day it comes out, then we are in All-American Week. This is coming out on Tuesday, 23 May. This is upon us. We are doing it. We are in the middle of All-American Week. So today, we just want to set the table a little bit and give you a little bit of the history of All-American Week. All-American Week is a relatively recent tradition in the lifespan of the 82nd Airborne Division. It goes back to 1986. It's always been the third week in May, always leading into Memorial Day. The first ever All-American Week in 1986 started with a Division 4-mile run, just like we're doing this year. It had a memorial ceremony at the 82nd Museum, just like we're doing this year. And really a lot of the same events we, we do now, sporting events, veterans picnic, there was a division pass in review. The guest speaker for the division pass in review, retired Lieutenant General Jim Gavin. Very appropriate that Gavin was the guest speaker at the very first All-American Week. We talk about Gavin all the time in this show. And the name Gavin and the personality of Gavin really embodies the 82nd. And one could really argue that he is the 82nd, certainly in terms of our impact on history. So that was the start of All-American Week. We have not done it every year. There were four times that there were no, there was no All-American Week. 2003, 2007, 2010, and 2012. These were due to deployments, global war on terrorism deployments. The surge in 2007, uh, in 2003, 2010, and 2012, during high uh, deployment times, too many units gone, and generally the division headquarters was gone, so there was really no way to uh, command and control All-American Week. In 2001, well, here's a couple of little footnotes from the, the annals of our history. In 2001, Pushball, this was a very controversial thing at the time, Pushball was taken out of All-American Week. Uh, I did not know what Pushball was. If you don't know what it is, it's, uh, I guess, just what it sounds like. It's paratroopers pushing an enormous ball, the ball, a ball basically the size of a person, uh, pushing it around a field until you get it in the, in the goal. The reason pushball was canceled, too many broken noses. A little uh, ironic, I think, given that we're doing a full mixed martial arts combatives this year where uh, there, there may be many broken noses. But pushball was taken out of All-American Week in 2001. In 2005, the Global War on Terrorism Memorial was installed, honoring paratroopers killed in Iraq and Afghanistan since 9-11, and it became part of the Division Memorial. Secretary of Defense Donald Rumsfeld was the guest speaker at the review for 2005. Rumsfeld was a very controversial figure at the time. This was when there was a lot of controversy about Iraq, about the way that the Iraq war was being adjudicated. In 2008, President George W. Bush attended and spoke at the division review. In 2008, the Global War on Terrorism Memorial was expanded. In 2016, we saw the unveiling of the Combat Training Memorial. This was under General Clark. General Richard Clark wanted a way to honor the paratroopers killed training for combat. More than 220 names are on the Combat Training Memorial. We are adding names to the Combat Training Memorial this year. We're getting ready to do that as part of our memorial ceremony. We're adding eight names. And we want to be clear on this point because... These are not eight paratroopers killed over the last year, since last year's All-American Week. These are paratroopers that were killed over the years, over the course, the lifespan of our history, and the paperwork either didn't catch up or the, you know, poor record keepings over the years, we, we were not informed of these. So, these were, date back from 1959, 
all the way to 1993. The most recent of the eight names is 1993. These were paratroopers killed in uh, parachute fatalities. You know, one of them it was killed in 1973 in a flamethrower accident, artillery mishap in 1983, and in uh, 1993, Sergeant Robert Spellman from the 504th was killed in a rock slide in Sinai, in Egypt. This year, we are also going to add a name to the Global War on Terrorism Memorial. As many people know, First Lieutenant Weston Lee, a platoon leader from our Falcon Brigade, was killed in Iraq uh, after he detonated an IED last month, just last month. So, really, that's a stark reminder of that, uh, you know, the world is still dangerous and the 82nd Airborne Division has to be ready, that we have to be highly trained and that the world still needs an 82nd Airborne Division. His name will go on the Global War on Terrorism Memorial. First Lieutenant Weston Lee is the 5,066th person, soldier or paratrooper, killed in, the hit, in combat in the history of the 82nd Airborne Division. Captain Jewett Williams of the 326th Infantry Regiment was the first 82nd soldier killed in combat during World War I. He was killed in 1918 all the way to uh, Weston Lee um, just last month, April of uh, 2017. So, really, that's it for this show. We just wanted to give a, uh, a quick history of uh, All-American Week and, and just kind of tee things up. We hope that you uh, you listen next week because we really do have a special show. We've got a, uh, a couple of dramatic pieces. We've got a full story about the next 100 years. So... Thanks for listening. We hope you're at All American Week. We hope you're enjoying All American Week. Call us, send us an email if you've got any questions, and please continue to listen to the All American Legacy Podcast.